Hey you mob, thanks so much for joining in for another Deadly Kindy session. My name is Kendi and I work with the Deadly Kindies team and I also run a play group and early learning program over on the south side of Brisbane uh, at Birthing in Our Community. So shout out to all the families over there. Hope you're watching this morning. And I also have a friend with me today. I'm Brandon. Uh, I've been on here a few times now. If you saw me last time, I was wearing one, of these, pro. wearing one of these new deadly shirts. Loved it so much, I didn't take it off. There you go. Uh, and I am a Deadly Choices Ambassador and an Olympic weightlifter. Cool, too deadly. Thank you. So before we start all of our sessions, we do an acknowledgement of country to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land. And today we have got a special clip coming from Gundamira, Deadly Kindy. So please enjoy. Have a look at all the jar gems over there. Big voices. Big voices. This is the last time we're going to do it. Ready? One, one two, two, three. three. We acknowledge the Hey you mob, Kenny enrolments are open for 2021. If your Jarjum is turning four before June 30, now is the time to enrol for Kindy to give them a deadly start to life. Kindy not only allows them to experience play-based fun, but also helps them develop lifelong skills like problem solving, making friends and independence. To learn more about the Deadly Kindies program and to find your closest Kindy, visit www.deadlykindies.com.au. Did you know that us kids should start getting eye tests around the time we turn five? We should get our eye test before we start grade one. And as long as our eyes are healthy, we don't need another eye test for about five years. School screenings don't replace normal eye tests by getting tested at the clinic. The eye doctor can see if there are any issues and set us up for a bright future. Plus, if you take us to one of our clinics for eye check, we get to take home a free pair of these Delhi Sunnies. Find your closest clinic online at delhichoices.com.au. How deadly was that to see those jargons out there connected to their culture and acknowledging the traditional owners? And of course, we had our ads and we're talking about, you mentioned before, mm -hmm. these deadly shirts. So we've got for 2021, we've got some new deadly kindy shirts and how you can get your hands on one of those is if you're a kindy kid, your mom and dad can take you to go and get a health check and you can end up with one of these shirts and also too, a kindy kit. So in the kindy kit comes all the stuff um, that you need to go to kindy. So you've got drink bottles, lunch box, uh, sheet, hat, uh, blanket, when you need to have a rest, all the, all the deadly stuff that you need. Um, so have a talk at your clinic and they're still taking enrollments for 2021, even though we've already started the year off. I know I've got some of my little friends are down there. They've started kindy already for the year and they're going really well, love their teachers and, and what they get up to each day. So if you're four or three and a half to five, you can go to kindy too. How deadly would that be? You can get your deadly kindy shirt and your kit. All right, so let's have a quick yarn about what we're up to today. So we're going to read a beautiful story, and that one's called Father Sky, Mother Earth. Um, and Brandon's going to read that one for us. We're also going to do an activity of making paper mache bowls. So we will be using some recycled items and 
making some bowls, doing some painting. And to finish up, we've got a deadly song. So we're talking lots at, a mo um, at the moment about caring for country, caring for the land, making sure that the land's gonna be here, um, you know, while we're here, caring for it, making sure it's healthy. So that one's called Care for Country. And that's a new one. That's one that um, I wrote and I hope that you like it. But we'll get into that a little bit later. We'll start off now with our story. Um, this story is a, a long one. Hey, Brandon. It is. So this will be a part one series of the book. That's right. So let's start off, off right. that book today. And, and I just might mention too, um, the author of this book, um, Uduru, so she is, um, she was an amazing woman, a Nunaka woman from Minjiraba. She grew up, um, was born on Stradbroke Island and she was a, a poet and an activist. Um, a very strong woman connected to her culture who, who made lots of changes and did achieve many things in her life. So um, a privilege that we're reading her story here today. So let's get into it. All right. Father Sky and Mother Earth had four children, Sun, Moon, Sea and Rock. They never again lived with each other after they had their children. So, so can we see where the sun and the moon are there? There. Then we have the others. And the Earth. Sun and Moon created servants for themselves. They named them clouds, winds, rain, stars, and storms. Sun and moon and their servants lived with Father Sky. Rock created servants too. He named them tree, birds, animals, reptiles, and insects. Rock and his servants lived with Mother Earth. Sea servants were oceans, tides, currents, and gales. Sea and his servants lived between Father Sky and Mother Earth. Father Sky watched over Mother Earth. When she grew thirsty, he asked Moon and Sun to send her water. They sent her rain to help. Rain created rivers, creeks, and lakes, and filled them with water. Sun sent his warmth to Mother Earth. Rock, trees, birds, animals, reptiles, and insects all loved Sun. In the early morning and early evening, Sun would light up Father Sky with his many colors. Sun called his early morning colors sunrise and he called his early evening colors sunset. Moon and stars lit up Father Sky at night after sun had gone to sleep. So we can see the sunrise there, then across, sunset. Beautiful. Sea servant Gale looked after Father Sky and Mother Earth by keeping everything clean Gail knew he needed help, so he created Cyclone and Tornado to help him. Sea's other servants, oceans, tides and currents, would be blown and tossed about and would go wherever Gale, Cyclone and Tornado blew them. Gale, Cyclone and Tornado sometimes blew so hard that they knocked over rock and his servant tree and other things that got in their way. Rock's other servants, birds, animals, reptiles, and insects would hide them until Gale, Cyclone, and Tornado had finished their cleaning. Birds lived in trees, branches, and animals would climb up tree trunks and rest there. Insects lived under trees' bark or in trees' trunk and branches. Gum tree let koala live in his branches and koala fed on gum trees leaves. 
Other animals and insects like to burrow under rock or sit on him and warm themselves. So you see the koala hiding in the tree there. There's some gum leaves. And platypus live with frog and tortoise in rivers, creeks and lakes. Rock created mountains and hills to protect his servants from the cold winds of gale, cyclone and tornado. And tree created plants and grass and flowers. And animals, reptiles and insects created more animals, reptiles and insects. And so on and so on and so on. And they all were very happy creating and balancing and loving and living and helping one another. One day, when trees, plants, grass and flowers were busy looking after a green and bright bee, whom insects had created, came along. Bee explained that if he took pollen from one flower to another flower, this would help trees, plants, grass and flowers to create more trees, plants, grass and flowers. Besides, Bee told them he could also create honey in his home in the hollowed out tree and this would help feed the, an the birds, animals, reptiles and insects. Trees, plants, grass and flowers welcomed Bee and told him to come as often as he liked. And in this way, they all helped one another. Sea created more servants and they lived with the sea. They were fish, shellfish, starfish, seaweed and crab. An octopus lived in the sea. Octopus dug a big hole in sea's bed and scattered rocks and shells all around it. Octopus lived in this hole and mangrove tree lived in the mud swamps close to Mother Earth in sea salt water. He sheltered and fed fish. Shellfish and crab, seabirds nested in mangrove's uh, branches. Mangrove grew little spikes in the mud to help him live and breathe. And whales played in the ocean's vast waters. And so it was a happy time of creation, and those who came after sun, moon, sea, and rock kept creating. And Father Sky and Mother Earth were very proud and happy for them all. And that is part one of the book. That's right. And it says, and so was the beginning. So that was beautiful, wasn't it? To learn about how the land and the sky and sun and moon had you know, everything had grown, wasn't it? You know, the, the trees and then came the plants, then the bees who were pollinating. So it's beautiful. And then uh, we will get to read the second part of, of that story. Um, and that's the part where it starts to talk about um, humans and, and people and um, what, what we have done to the land. And for a long time, our people looked after the land. But when we have a look now, have a look around now, you know, the land, isn't being looked after how it how it used to be so we're talking lots about caring for country and how we um, the people and our mob and you know different different um, you know at your kindy maybe at your school at your home um, you can look after the land around your place too so our activity today is we're kind of using recycled materials to make paper mache plates and and bowls so you can make um, what you like, really, and we're going to show you how to do it. So we've got some old paper here. I had this paper um, that some of it had come um, with a package that I had ordered. And I thought, I'm not going to throw that paper out. I can use that for something. And I used the cardboard down at um, the playgroup that I run. So we made some different um, little peekaboo boxes we cut holes in and the um, little kids have been um, putting little little balls in there and little toys and, and playing a peekaboo game. Uh, and I also had uh, something else I think was wrapped in brown paper. So that's what we're going to use today to make our paper mache. But we need to make the glue to stick the paper on so that we mm -hmm. can make our balls. 
So, Brandon, if you'd like to start off with our ingredients, yep. do you remember what we need? So we have our flour here. That's right. So in there we've got about a cup of flour. Mm -hmm. And we are going to add the whole lot. That's it. And like we talk about always on when we do Deadly Kindies filming, eh? you know, sometimes things don't work out. You might have mm -hmm. different size bowls, different size measurements, but that's how we learn. That's how we, you know, that's science. So um, we'll see today how we go when we make our, our paper mache, our glue, our mm -hmm. paste. So next we're going to add a pinch of salt. That's Just right. See here, so got a pinch. Because since we're using flour, um, it's good to have the salt uh, to keep it preserved, I guess. Give it a mix. So we'll give it that a mix around. Now I think we will add some water. That's it. Good memory. So we've got water here. That's it. You can tip it in. How much do you think? I reckon All start with half. half. I usually go half. When I make things at, at Playgroup, we go half first. Because you can always add more, but it's you can't really take away. All right. So the uh, recipe says that it should be um, kind of the consistency of pancake batter. If you eat pancakes at home, I know on uh, Deadly Kindies we've made some healthy uh, banana pancakes before, so uh, you might know that consistency already. What do you think? Is that that looks a bit thick. I, eh? I think it's maybe a little bit more water. Yeah, what more do you think? water. I reckon more water. Maybe too. a little bit. And I do have some backup water if we need more too, because you just never know. While you get onto that, I am going to wrap my bowl with some Glad Wrap. So this is, so at the end, you can actually get the paper mache off the bowl. I'll show you here, we're talking about, you know, trying things and, and maybe not always getting it right the first time. This was the first one I made. Can you see that? Let's see that there. This one I made a little bit too thin and I stuck it really tightly to the glad wrap. So when I removed it from the bowl, it ripped. I hadn't done enough layers and I needed to do it a little bit more loosely around. And I can show you that when I make this one here. But there you go, that's one I tried and I didn't give up the first time, you know, mm -hmm. I kept going. I thought, oh, I'm going to try and make it better next time. And that's where I was able to make these ones. So I kept trying and look, I think we did all right. There we go. How's that consistency? Mm. What do we think? I think it's getting there. I reckon it's getting there too. Now, the only thing we have to really try and get out and lucky we've got someone who's got muscles is to try and get the uh, chunks of flour, try and make it smooth. Mm -hmm. So we have to give it a really good whisk there. I'm going to wrap my bowl here. See how we go. And you can use some Glad Wrap. I've got this uh, glean, uh, green, um, you know, Glad wrap here, but if you've got spare glad wrap after you use something at home, even better than we're talking about recycling again and reusing items. We, um, you know, we want to try and use something more than once. So that's a good chance for you. If you've got some spare glad wrap, you've got a little bowl, you can wrap it over while you're doing your paper mache. What about this? A bit of PVA in? glue. That is also the last ingredient for our paste. Right. So you can give that a good squeeze, add it into there. And that just gives it that little bit more stickiness. How much? Oh, keep going. Big one. Bit more. Perfect. All right, one last little mix. Very good. And you, if you don't have PVA glue, you can try it with normal glue at home as well. And I reckon it, it was quite sticky even without the glue. So you, you probably could make it if you don't have glue and you've just got flour and water and salt. You could probably just give it a try with that as well. What do you reckon? That's pretty perfect. Go. I reckon we're go. good to go. So right. what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you one to paint. Thank you. And I'm going to show everyone how to do the paper mache. Sounds so, good. Oh, we can leave that one there. So we've got some paint here, paint in the balls. I'll move this one out the way. And I'm going to use the big 
brush. So I'll dip it in the paste and you can see here it can get a bit messy. So this is one, if you want to do this activity outside, I definitely recommend this as an outside one. But if you can be careful, just grab something like a, a chopping board or, um, you know, something at home because you will see that it can get a bit messy with the drips. So what I did to start with is I painted it around. Um, but you can also too just dip the the um, the paper straight in. But that's that is a little bit messy, and I'm not wearing my apron, so I'm just going to use the paintbrush. We'll go around. Now the thing about paper mache too is patience. Do you have patience? Do you know what patience means, Brandon? Are you patient? I would say I'm patient. Yeah. So just taking your time with it. That's right. Um, yeah, it's definitely something you can't rush, can you? No, that's right. And because it takes time to dry. Now, I was lucky when I made did my practice ones at home, it was a very hot day. It was very, very hot. We were joking calling it the burning Mari sun. And, but that was good because it dried our um, paper mache real quick. So that was deadly. I was lucky. But I know I've read uh, other teachers who did it, um, I think, maybe they were in Canada or America, they were saying when they did it, it was snowing and it was cold. Okay. So they had to set theirs in front of their fireplace. So that's a bit different from, um, from what I had to do. I was good with the sun. So using our paper, I'm going to wrap it around. And remember, it takes time to dry. So once you've got a few on, you can also paint over the top again, paint your paste on. How long would you usually give it for it to dry? I reckon, well, I did mine in the afternoon. On a hot day, it was a few hours. So mm -hmm. I think it was about three, three hours. Um, but if you want to play it safe, I reckon one, one whole day in the sun is, is probably good. Um, but, you know, you can make a few. So um, the pace lasts a long time. You can pop it in the fridge. You could do it one day and then make it, um, you know, make something else another day. And two, you don't just have to use bowls. You could use um, a vase that you might like to put some flowers in. Um, what else? Can you think of something else you could use, Brandon? Hmm. Yes, what do you say? A vase. Yeah. You can. Depends where you got at home. You can yeah. put some toys in there. Yeah, you um, could do different shape. Lots of different shape stuff, hey? See what you can make. Um, and you can, um, if you've got access to clay as well, you know, you can, um, we've done pinch pots before on mm -hmm. this show where we used um, some air dry clay. So if you don't have access to these um, materials that you can make um, different things as well using different, different materials and you can paint them up just like um, what Brandon's got there. Well, what colour are you using? That's like an orangey kind of orange, colour, eh? Orange. I think I might swap to a blue now, I think. Oh, very good. And the thing is too, with your um, paper mache, you can see I'm going around um, the edges. So I'm going over the edge of the bowl, sorry. And that will actually make it easier for me to peel it off when it comes time, um, once it's dry. So I'll do a few more layers here. And remember my... Um, my first attempt, I didn't have enough layers and that was the problem. So just keep going around and around. But remember, the more layers and the more glue you put on, the longer it will take to dry, of course, because it's going to be a bit wet. And I, um, something that I didn't mention, the thinner your paper, um, the easier it will be to mold it. So I've got two different types of paper. This, this paper is a bit thicker, so it's... It's still good, it works. Um, but if you've got a newspaper, oh, that's, that'll be so deadly because it's very <laughs> thin, very easy to shape and mold to your bowl or your vase or your plate, whatever you may choose to use. Um, and always, of course, make sure that you get some help from an adult, um, get parents' permission, don't go using mum's favorite, uh, you know, vase or, or something like that that's been around in the family a long time you don't want anybody to get in trouble so make sure that you ask permission to use anything and of course wrap it with your glad wrap to ensure that it, it stays safe this stuff washes off too you know this um this glue this paste that we've made 
quite easy to come off, even off your fingers as well. And when it dries, you can peel it, it gets a bit flaky because it's flour. All right, I might do one more mm -hmm. layer around the side. How are you going with yours? That looks so Good deadly. Man. I Good like man. that. Blue like the colour of your shirt too, eh? Do you like the colour blue? Mm-hmm. Very good. Now, I've only uh, chosen to do a little one here just for our demonstration today, so it didn't take too long. But, mm -hmm. you know, that bowl, you could use a bowl like this if you've got a bigger bowl for cooking. Um, you know, you can make something quite large. And once it is finished, once you have finished painting it up, um, if you want to keep it preserved and, and um, you can put some maybe uh, an adult has access to some varnish, you can make put a clear coat on it to make it last a long time. But also too, just like that, it's cool as well, you know, mm. that will still last a while. Um, but probably wouldn't use this one for eating. Don't put, don't put your cereal in there. Maybe not. <laughs> More of a decoration bowl that you could put some toys in or if you are, you know, collecting something, some rocks or, um, yeah. More of a decoration bowl. Very good. All right, so I'm going to hold mine up here, see if I can... You can zoom in on that one. So it's just covered like that. It looks quite messy at the moment, but that's okay. That's just the first few layers. I will let it dry out in the sun um, this afternoon and probably overnight as well, um, just to make sure. And then tomorrow, it will probably look a bit more like this. This one's still a bit thin. See that there? So I could even, without, once you've got your shape, if, that, if we can take that off, um, you know, you might be able to see in there, it's got the glide wrap shape. Can you see? There's different patterns in there from where the glide wrap was crinkled up inside. In there. Um, once you're out, you could even just start adding more to it like this. You know, you don't even necessarily have to have it resting on the bowl anymore. I could put some more layers on. Grab a piece like that. And that will make it nice and strong. And I could just keep going around and around, let that dry. So this is an activity that you might do over a few days, maybe over the weekend, hey, or if there's school holidays coming up, or a project at kindy. You can do it um, one day and then the next day come in and, and do it the next day too. Very good. Looks great. Letting it dry. Yeah, that's it. Patience. We spoke about that, didn't we? You've got to be patient. Alrighty, so now we're going to sing a song. Let's I'm going it. to sing the song. What are you going to do? I have my trusty little maraca here. That's it. And it's care for country. You'll see the words will come up and you can sing along with me. Alrighty. Reduce, reuse, recycle. These are the words we know. We have to care for country so we can live and grow. With the knowledge of our elders, how deadly we can be. We will save our country. It starts with you and me. There you go. And that's a song that I wrote, but feel free to. You can print that one out and sing it at, at home or at kindy. Um, as I said, we're really focusing on caring for the land at the moment and recycling, cleaning up our rubbish, uh, making sure that the land is here for future generations to come. Okay, well that's our show for the day, but we're going to cross now for a special goodbye song with Cecilia and Kane, and that's Yawo. They're up on uh, Thursday Island, up in the Torres Strait, and they're going to sing goodbye. Thanks for joining in. And thank you, Brandon. No we'll worries. see you next time, guys. See you later. See ya. Hi, I'm Cecilia. Hi, I'm King. And we're going to sing the Ya War song today for you, which means goodbye in TI language. So put your hands up like that. Ready? Go. Yeah. Goodbye, 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 goodbye. Ya War,